Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, San Francisco Association of Realtors. Uh, uh, sorry, Global Business Council first event. Um, thank you for being patient with us. We are going to start with a video. Genevieve, when you're ready, you can go ahead and hit start button. Any audio, Genevieve? Put on a flat surface, press down on it. And whenever you're cutting anything, you want to hold your fingers like this so that the knife is traveling along your fingernails. That's, uh, that's how we cut baguettes in a professional kitchen. Got it? Great. Now it's time for you to give it a try. Let's see what you got. Hello. Okay, I'm going to cut Hello. a baguette. Hello. Hello, Rebecca. First of all, I don't, cook. I, I don't eat bread, but I'm just seeing what I can do. Hi, everybody. Sunny Chan here with SMA. Hi, how uh, are you? When you're cutting a baguette, you need to make sure that you have the right tools. Good First morning. thing you always do is you make a data entry into your diary because every baguette is important. So I got a knife thanks to Mark Nian, the young Ken Cook. First, I'm going to use this uh, slicer and see... Uh, how good this thing will go. Yeah. This is the right tool for the job. You have the perfect bite-sized baguette piece. Oh boy, it looks like our members could use a little more education about the ins and outs of European cuisine. Join the San Francisco Association of Realtors Global Business Council for a real estate taste of Europe on Thursday, April 22nd, 2021 from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Learn about real estate opportunities in France, Italy, and Spain while we sample delectable dishes from Curiosity Catering which will be delivered directly to your front door. Some of the delicious goodies include Rodor or State Champagne, Manchego Cheese, Tiramisu, and yes, a baguette. Be sure to register by Monday, April 12th at mysfrealtors.com slash events. You can also click on the link in the description below. Sharpen your knives and pour yourself a glass of vino. Bon appétit! Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We have an esteemed uh, panelist uh, going to be talking talking about how to uh, do business in uh, real estate in Europe, uh, specifically uh, Spain, France, and Italy. Uh, we are honored to have our special guest. But before we go to start speak to our guests, I'd like to share with you uh, a little bit about uh, Global Business Council. Um, global Business Council is dedicated to globally themed education, programming, and networking for our members. The council comprised of volunteers and staff liaisons, take the lead in planning global programs, host, hosting CIPS courses, and collaborating with neighboring boards to build awareness among members of global business opportunity that surround them. And today we are honored to have one of our own, Jasky Thompson. He is he has been a, a licensed realtor, real estate uh, broker since 1983. His extensive experience in both residential and commercial sa sales over the last 38 years has made him a COVID real estate resource. Without further ado, I'd like to bring in Jasky, and Jasky is today's uh, moderator. Jasky, go ahead. It's all, uh, the floor is all yours. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. I am pleased to uh, introduce our amazing panel. Uh, I think it's important to know that uh, both Leo in, is live from Paris, as well as Ramon, who's live from Barcelona, and it's 3 a.m. their time. So 
it's amazing that uh, they're doing that. And, and Ramon will be speaking on France. Leo will be speaking, uh, I'm sorry, Ramon will be speaking on Spain. Leo will be speaking on France. And then we have Marissa Kagan. Marissa is actually in Las Vegas and she's gonna speak on Italy. So we're pretty excited to have this amazing group of people with us. So to get us started, I think, why don't we start with Leo? Leo, you're, um, thank you for joining us, um, Leo. And I know it's three o'clock in the morning. You look fantastic. <laughs> so thank you for joining. Do you hear me? I do now, thank you. Ah, okay, okay. So, so Leo, yeah. Yeah, would you please first share with us how the pandemic has affected the real estate industry uh, in, in Paris and where you're based in Paris. Uh, so uh, if you can share that with us, that would be fantastic. Yes. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, uh, the, after one year of uh, uh, pandemic, you we are uh, 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 we are uh, watching now what what's happened, uh, and uh, the, it's the beginning of the of the disaster, if you want, of this uh, pandemic, uh, because we 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 are uh, we uh, are uh, constating that uh, there are many. Uh, 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 homeless uh, and uh, uh, no 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 job uh, uh, jobless uh, uh, today and many uh, bankruptcy of uh, uh, on, of uh, firms and uh, but the the real estate market uh, uh, is uh, is uh, really uh, is staying uh, relatively strong strong because uh, the the all is changing, the mind is changing today uh, because uh, uh, people uh, want to, to, to leave uh, Paris and to go, to go uh, uh, outside Paris uh, uh, for many reasons, uh, many reasons. The first reason is the, the uh, 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 having space, you know, uh, having space, having uh, 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 a little garden uh, uh, for uh, living because the pandemic uh, uh, show us that uh, living in in the apartment and in Paris is you know Paris how is uh, how is uh, built by uh, Osman uh, it's all is small all is uh, no 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 uh, balconies no uh, most of the apartment doesn't get balconies or something like that in Paris in Paris in Tramuros you know. Uh, outside in suburb, may, maybe you can find this, but in Paris and Tramuros, you can find this. So people today, a new generation of uh, of uh, uh, purchasers uh, wants to 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 leave uh, Paris and Tramuros and to 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 live in the uh, 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 in the Greater Paris because we have today a big project of uh, Greater Paris around. Uh, 50, 60 kilometers from Paris and Tramuros with 68 new railway station uh, uh, metro. Uh, and it's very, very uh, uh, important because it's changing uh, all, the, all, the, all the real estate market around uh, uh, Greater Paris. Uh, because in, in Paris, uh, we have uh, uh, buildings uh, by a building by built by uh, uh, Baron Haussmann, is the, the, the big architect uh, in Paris in, in, uh, uh, in century 19, 1920, 1930. And he built really nice buildings, but today they are not uh, connected. They are not, uh, they are not uh, automated, you know, this building and new generation wants all the uh, having all the, the numeric and digital in the in the in the building, and uh, the, uh, the building will be connected today. And in Paris, uh, there is a big program to 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 uh, renovate to uh, this building around uh, two billions uh, two billions euro 
uh, uh, by the state for uh, uh, removing this uh, building, but it's really uh, uh, complicated. But so new uh, people want to, to, to buy outside Paris and uh, there are new, <coughs> new construction. Uh, uh, for instance, in the United States, you have many new constructions. You construct many, 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 but in France, no, we have a, a crisis ab about this uh, uh, new construction beca because the, uh, 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 the, the administratively it's very uh, heavy, heavy to, for, for building. Uh, uh, it's not like in the United States, you are very quick, very speed for a new construction, but not in, in France, it's, it's heavy. Uh, it, it, it takes around two, three years sometimes for uh, new construction. So the, uh, the rules uh, will change actually in France and to, uh, will be most uh, uh, quick and uh, uh, all in all the, the mayors of uh, around Paris because in uh, around uh, greater Paris, we, we build many, many, most of all, all the, the number of construction in France. So. Uh, it's the, the big market will be in greater Paris, really. Uh, so we need uh, many new new constructions. Uh, Leo, and, that's uh, uh, Leo. What you guys are experiencing is the same thing that we are experiencing here in the U.S., which is really the urban flight and the people who are living in the metropolitan cities have yeah. been looking moving out uh, to look for bigger spaces, uh, more outdoor space. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I know uh, when we get to Spain, we'll hear more about what's, what that is. In the new development, what is the price range for some of the new, um, for some of the new properties that are there? And it sounds like there is already a master plan for the, for the development. So if, if, some, if, if one of my colleagues from here uh, wants to invest in France, would those be uh, a good place that you would recommend that they purchase? Yes, uh, alors, uh, actually it's, uh, it's uh, uh, difficult for the, for the bank uh, to finance uh, purchasers uh, because uh, like I, I told you, uh, we, ha we, ha we, are, uh, we have many, uh, you know, um, bankruptcy here actually, uh, many, uh, and it, it was a statistic, a statistic. Uh, we have many firms bankruptcy, so the 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 the, the finance, the bank finance uh, are very uh, uh, called to finance. So, uh, so Leo, the, the, you know, just quick a quick question in regards to that. You mentioned the bankruptcies on the firms. Are you seeing uh, the any bankruptcies on the personal residences on the um, uh, you know on the homes and especially in Paris? No, in all in all France, in, it's not only in in, in Paris, but uh, the the big market is in in really around Greater Paris, okay, uh, and uh, actually, but but the the real estate uh, uh, is is uh, is staying uh, relatively strong, relatively strong, uh, but uh, uh, strong because uh, the 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 the. Uh, the owners uh, don't want to sell in any prices. So uh, uh, who, it's only the, the fund pension that uh, make a big business and they buy uh, very, uh, very expensive today because they, uh, they fought around 15, 20 years for the uh, incomes, okay? And they, 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 uh, they, they, they have, they, are, uh, they can wait uh, the the incomes with the with with the, the with time okay uh, but uh, for the purchasers uh, uh, for the buyers uh, uh, particulars it's it's difficult they have to put down uh, at minimum thirty percent from the the, the 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 price you know and it's not uh, easy for uh, anybody to to put down thirty percent to to bring it's today it's the low. Is the law in France? You have to put down at minimum thirty percent. Mm. You know, so it's difficult. Before this, the the, the bank can give you uh, uh, around one 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 percent, one hundred percent of your purchase. 
Okay. Ah. So, uh, yeah, it's not. It's not the the, the from the first January uh, of uh, this year. You have to put down thirty percent. So the, the the market will be will be uh, uh, will be uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, it will be um, uh, difficult for for the the, the purchasers uh, and uh, uh, it's. Uh, Today, the fund pension they buy is for this reason that the market stays strong. It's the fund pension they buy many buildings, many, many buildings, and they buy expensive, they buy ex really expensive around sometimes in uh, one building you can buy, uh, they can uh, sell for 10,000 euro square meters. It's very, very. So, yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> So that's uh, 10,000 10, per square meters. Yeah. But wow. it, it, for the fund pension, when you buy building, you know, in block building, okay? But if you can buy, for instance, in Paris, uh, Intramuros, you can, you, can, you can buy around, uh, at minimum, 12,000, around 15, 16, 17,000 uh, square meters, uh, euro square meters. You know, it's very, very today. It's very expensive in 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 Paris and Ramiros. It's for this reason uh, the 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 new generation sells in Paris and they go outside Paris in the greater Paris. You know, and they can buy around five, six, four, 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 four thousand. You know, uh, square mm. meter, and they have space and they have. Uh, uh, New construction uh, with uh, with domotics, you know, with uh, connecting uh, a building uh, and with space, with balconies, with parking, with many things that uh, uh, you can uh, with uh, economy of energy, you know, uh, mm. with uh, affordable. Okay, so it's uh, uh, today uh, all these pandemics change our mind, change all all your. Uh, uh, our living today uh, very changed, and we when we didn't finish to 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 change all the the release the release mind real estate okay uh, around price around uh, uh, living around uh, all all the, this uh, will, will change, and uh, uh, we all the houses you know that you can buy for instance in one one hundred kilometer from Paris. Uh, uh, before you can buy it for eight, uh, uh, 80, uh, uh, thousand uh, houses around but today you can buy it for 300,000 euro the, the the price are higher today because the prices the, the prices are higher today yeah since, yeah since the, outside since outside paris for houses yeah. you know for, for houses. houses yes yeah 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 for houses yeah. Uh, for for instance before pandemics you can buy this the same houses for uh, uh 80 uh, one, one, 100 000 euro you can buy these houses today 200 300 000 euro the same houses okay i sold wow. the houses you i sold houses and i sold I, I, I saw the, 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 the different price and all the people asking the, this kind of house because you have train for one hour, for instance. Mm. But in, in Paris, from uh, point to point, you can make one hour by metro. So they, can, they take train to come in Paris and today with, uh, with uh, 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 teletravail, today many persons are uh, working from home and uh, and they, they don't afraid to, to, to take train for one hour, you know, and to come in Paris and it, to, to, go to, to do job. Yeah, that, uh, we, we love that. And we're, especially with, because of the metro systems that you guys have in Europe, it makes getting from one town to another uh, so much easier versus in the US. So Leo, just a couple of other things. Uh, just what, if, if, uh, if you, you're, because hopefully you'll, and for everyone out there, Leo is uh, um, is the president of Theopsy for France, and Theopsy is a, an international real estate federation. And he has a, a myriad of contacts. So if you have clients who are interested in in purchasing in France, um, he can uh, give you guys guidance and and assist you with that. Um, Leo, just a couple of questions. We, 
are there property taxes and what are the property taxes? How much are the property taxes that one pays? Uh, you, uh, property taxes at around uh, uh, seven, eight percent. Eight percent for and is that per is that per annum or or or, or one time? Uh, one time is uh, uh, around eight percent, and uh, uh, for foreigners is a uh, three percent a year. Three percent per year. Yeah, for, for foreigners. foreigners. Yeah, yeah. In in but, the in the buying process, as an uh, as an American wanting to buy in France, uh, we getting financing. I would imagine would be a challenge, but. Uh, if they come in with a, a larger down payment, does that make it a little easier? Yes. Uh, uh, today, the, the, the rules change, and uh, uh, for uh, attracting uh, uh, foreigners, they, they they have to put down at least fifty percent, and the, the bank uh, they can get the the the, the fifty percent from the bank. It was not possible before. Uh, it, 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 few years ago, uh, for foreigners, it was very hard to, 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 to buy uh, if they don't put down uh, all the cash, uh, you know. But today, the, 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 the bank will change, and they can finance around 50, 60 percent of the purchase for foreigners. So, Leo, I'm, 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 I'm a cheapskate. So... <laughs> <laughs> Where should I be buying in France? Should I be going to some of my uh, back down to the south, the to Nice, or uh, down near Valleyvis? Or you know, it depends of uh, what you want. You know, uh, France is really uh, attractive market, uh, attractive market by the climate, by the uh, culture, by the museum, by the gastronomy, uh, uh, by the, uh, the landscape, by the, uh, all, uh, all, all France. You can have Britain. You have Normandy. You have Riviera. You have uh, uh, Paris. You have uh, uh, Bourgogne uh, around uh, the wine area. You know, you have many kind uh, of uh, uh, of France. It's it's uh, uh, really exceptional market. It's really we have a, a charming market in France. And uh, all the foreigners uh, from, from China, from uh, uh, India, from uh, 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 United States, from England, from Europe, they come to buy in France, be, uh, second home sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes they move uh, for working here. Uh, they find uh, another uh, um, way of life because we have, we have a really uh, good uh, uh, way of life uh, uh, for the theaters, you know, you have many things, uh, and the the distance are not so far. Uh, uh, I know, for instance, in the United States, from going to point to point, you can make one hour, two hours by car. It's it's very long. It's very uh, you can you can move easily. In France, you can move easily, and uh, from uh, uh, suburb to 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 the city, the center of the city, and it's. Uh, Really, uh, a special, uh, a really special market, uh, and uh, uh, you have this is one for charming market, and second is the social level, from all, all the people when they 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 success in, the, in their countries, uh, they want to have a second home in Paris because uh, uh, fr France is uh, uh, really. Uh, big big uh, culture big uh, uh, charming market and they they want to to prove to the uh, to the friends to the family that they success and they have second home in paris in france yeah. it's mind it's 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 a special special mind for this you know and uh, are, uh, yeah yeah no 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 it's just it's just amazing and i'm being uh, uh i i have to be cautious of our time here one quick thing, everyone. Uh, one of the things that you would always should consider when you're going to Europe for, um, uh, even if you're gonna, I mean, for, for vacation, is maybe you can reach out to some of our, our professionals over there. They'll be able to assist you guys and also help you uh, uh, with uh, uh, writing off some of, the, some of your trips. And that's an entirely different um, uh, panel conversation. But Leo, uh, 
is I wanted you very, very, if you can give me, give us a two minute quip on, on, on MIPIM. MIPIM, everyone, is one of the largest real estate conferences in the world. Uh, I was attending the one, scheduled to, to attend the one in March 2020, which was in Cannes, and they were expecting 27,000 attendees. Of course, unfortunately, it was the beginning of COVID and, um, um, uh, and it was postponed. So Leo, if you can just tell the group, and again, we've got about 100 people on and just you know, share with them really quickly, two minutes, and then we're gonna have to leave France. Unfortunately, I do have my, um, my baguette. Ah. <laughs> so Leo, quickly, uh, MIPIM and, and how FIOPSI is involved with MIPIM. Yes, yes. <clears throat> we are always, you know, uh, we are always attending in the MIPIM uh, for uh, many, many years because we have a partnership, a special, uh, FIAPSI get a, a special partnership with uh, the MIPIM uh, because uh, uh, most of uh, 30 to 40 uh, delegation uh, from uh, over the world come in MIPIM and it's the, uh, the, the strongest uh, uh, of the MIPIM that the delegation is around the world come to MIPIM for the business. You know, you can find many, many, many uh, Americans. Uh, many, they come really uh, strongly. Uh, Chinese, Indian, uh, European, you know, uh, all over the world. And uh, the, the uh, general uh, 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 manager of MIPIM, uh, Philippe Oren, say always, uh, uh, that the partnership with FIAPSI is very, very important for him because uh, uh, around uh, last uh, in uh, 2020, uh, 20, there are 37 delegation comes in MIPIM, you know, and it's at really international, uh, international uh, 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 real estate market. And it's very strong uh, uh, market uh, uh, MIPIM because all the, the, the state can attend, uh, are attendees, delegations, you know, uh, all the fund pension you can find is the, the biggest uh, uh, show, the biggest event uh, uh, every year in, in the world. Uh, in, it's in, in Cannes that you know, uh, and you come and you see it. And FIAPSI is really get a big uh, uh, stand. Uh, it's one big floor uh, in the, in the, in, in the uh, in MIPIM, and uh, we have many uh, round tables, you know, and we can give uh, all the uh, new uh, new rules, new uh, uh, actualities, new uh, uh, new mind, uh, and to talk about all many uh, uh, real estate and market uh, today. And uh, this year we'll be attendees in September. In September. Uh, so September, the September 2021 in Paris. Yeah. No, in, 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 yeah, in, in, I think in Cannes. Oh, I, I, I got that it was in uh, March 2020, 2022. No, in, in, no, in 21 this year, uh, the MIPIM will be, will be in, in, uh, in Cannes in September. Ah, fantastic, September. everyone. So yeah. you guys should but, know that. Yeah, Leo, but we, our our uh, World Congress FIAPSI is mm -hmm. 2022 in May. Ah, FIAP okay. FIAPSI France, we organize the World uh, the World Congress in Paris in Paris in May in May uh, where, where the, there'll be more than 50 delegations, 50 countries will come. In, in Paris for this event. And that's with... May 2022. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Leo, yeah. uh, I know it's 3.30 in the morning. We're gonna have to switch over and leave France and in uh, Japan Francais on très peu. Is it, mon français est très limité parce que mon vocabulaire est très limité. You can say hello to all America. Huh? We uh, always stay with all America strong and uh, God bless America. Yeah. Bless, so yes. Leo, hey everyone, Leo is gonna hang, hang around and then uh, we'll do a Q and A at the very end. 
And before we move over to uh, leave France, and we're going to take the high speed train and go to Spain. Uh, but before we do, I just want to be sure to thank everyone who's been involved in putting this program together. Uh, we, it's a, an amazing collaboration of not only the Global Business Council, but also the events committee uh, involved. And Marcus uh, Gruen has been amazing and, and, and everyone else on all of those committees. So thank you guys very, very much. And with that, we're going to move over to Spain because again, we just took the high speed train and we're going to go to Barcelona and meet Ramon. Ramon, how are you? Fine, thank you. Fine, thank Again, you. thank you for good being morning. up at- Good morning. Good, good, yeah, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Thank you for joining us. And everyone, Ramon is uh, uh, the president uh, of, of FIOPSI in Spain, as well as an amazing resume, which you, you guys all have in the, in the program. So Ramon, uh, please tell us what's happening in Spain. Most importantly, let's quickly just talk about how the pandemic has affected um, you guys, because you were also sharing with me the other day that your high, um, your high end real estate market is the luxury market is doing quite well. And people, the, the number, well, you tell us the number one uh, property that's selling right now. Okay. If you, uh, I want to speak uh, about uh, four or five minutes. Uh, uh, which uh, was the situation uh, uh, the, the last year and uh, which is the, the, the situation uh, actually in the real estate market. Uh, Mike Tyson once said something that perfectly describes the situation we, we are facing nowadays. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. After this unexpected strike, the first thing we had to do was coming about with a sanitary plan. Then we <clears throat> had to think about a new personal and a new professional plan. We had to stop and consider which path to take and we took the decision that needed to be taken to adapt our plans to this new reality. In March 14, 2020, a total lockdown was imposed in Spain as well as other sectors, the real estate industry was hardly struck for two or three months. After this time, our agents call restart scheduling view wings and builders and developers call restart construction works. During the lockdown, we had plenty of time to think about our profession, our health, our family, our needs. It has been a crucial moment in our lives and it has been essential to visualize of professional future. We were forced to use technological tools in order to keep on working from our homes and in order to keep in touch with our clients. Thankfully, we were already getting ready for the digital transformation. So we did not have much trouble when it came the moment to work from our homes. Nowadays, Many people are still teleworking, and this has led to a series of significant professional change and adaptations. The lockdown months was time for a reflection for both our clients and ourselves. We all had plenty of time to check if our homes were adequate to our needs. We had the time to think if a renovation of our places could be worth it or if it would be better to move over searching for a bigger, a better house with a great balcony or a garden or close to nature, the same of France. In this regard, here goes an interesting fact. 20% of the real estate transactions performed in Spain in the last quarter 2020 were acquisitions of properties with a garden or near a park and out of big cities. People have started to look for homes in place out of the city, but with good communication infrastructures. Mobility is on, is on the go. And how's the Spanish market right now? We can say that it's alive and, and kicking. In 2020, there were uh, 100,000 less transactions 
than in 2019, or so to say, we had 24% less transactions. In the same line, there was a 16. Ramon, uh, Ramon, I'm sorry, that was 24% less. Less than the year prior. Yes, and that's yes, the, yes. Entire, the entire country or just Barcelona? No, 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 no. In Spain. In, in Spain. Spain. In only Spain. In only Spain. Wow. Uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the last 2019, uh, the number of transactions was 500,000 in all Spain. In, in 2019, in 2020, 400,000. 100,000 less. Transactions. Yes, transaction, exactly, transaction. You think that in Spain for three months, uh, uh, <laughs> close the, 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 the yeah. door, yeah. close the door. Yeah. Because all people, all people confined, confined in right. the house. It's not possible to do visit. And yeah. also, or, and also of the new construction. Also it's closed for two, three months. Very, 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 very difficult. But also, there was a 16 fall in foreign investment, 16 percent. However, new housing construction raised by 115 in 2020. The new construction in 2020 is higher. Hmm. This positive indicator, yes, this positive indicator gives us, us very good perspectives for 2021. And we expect a certain normalization by 2022. The GDP fell by 12% in Spain in 2020, the more higher in Europe. But we are very happy for that there is a recovery in the next few years. The sanitary crisis, the sanitary crisis has brought us a significant economic crisis, but not because of lack of liquidity as it happened in 2008. Banks have cash, and we can say that they are our biggest allies nowadays. Obviously, they require certain guarantees from us to lend us money, but now they have it. In 2008, they had run out of liquidity and their real estate industry got dramatically damaged for it. In short, there are good perspectives and good opportunities. But don't let me be misunderstood. Price have gone down, but not as much as some expected. We can observe a slight 10 or 15% fall. If you want to invest in Spain, there is room to do so bad we do not have a large, a large stock of, of empathy housing as only a few new construction works were built this past year. What I would like to remark is the introduction of a paradigm shift. The goal is not thinking green, important. The terms sustainability, friendly cities, urbanistic change, they have become part of our everyday language. We want sustainable cities. The whole world has a big deal. We have to save our planet. And here, the real estate industry has a big responsibility because I feel so that all people want on a clean planet because the future of the planet are in the real estate hands. Now, it's been, yeah. Ramona, it's a, you know, it's something that's really important to uh, what we're seeing in our shift as well. Uh, that properties, you know, people are really wanting what we call green housing. Uh, yes. That yes. and 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 the and the zero. Um, uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, someone help me. The zero. Uh, um, uh, uh, carbon. Zero carbon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Zero, car zero carbon. Yes. Yeah. So exactly. So that's something that is really. Thank you, energy as well. Thanks, Martin. And so yeah, yeah. You know, that's great. So okay. Now, I have to ask you the same question because, again, I'm really cheap. General and I need to know, in Spain, should I put my money? I love Bilbao. I, was, I went up to visit the, the, the Guggenheim in Bilbao. And I've also been as far south as Marbella. And this is on many trips to, yes, uh, to yes, Spain. Yes, where yes. Um, I know Malaga. 
is a, is the new uh, Rodeo Drive of Spain, uh, if I may, the, the new Beverly Hills of Spain, I guess it is. Yes. Um, where, where are some of the places that the average agent like myself can afford in Spain? Uh, okay, my, my, my counsel uh, that uh, if, for, for example, why investing in Spain? Why? Uh, there are many reasons. There are many reasons. The, the first, the infrastructures. Uh, we go on, uh, on the third most extensive high speed rail in the world the high speed train, because Madrid connect uh, to different cities by high speed train. Barcelona, Valencia, Málaga, Alicante, Sevilla, uh, Valladolid, uh, in, in, a, in a few years uh, to, the, to, the, to the north of Spain, Paris, because we have an, 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 a train from Barcelona to Paris. How long is that? How long is Barcelona, that? Trip? Paris. Barcelona, huh? Paris. High Barcelona, Paris. Barcelona, Barcelona to Paris. How long? How Three, long? Uh, five, five hours. Five, five, five hours. Five hours. Five hours. Five hours. That's TV. fantastic. TV. <laughs> yes. And the and wine, example, and, and then, and example, in Spain, and a lot, a lot of people don't know about the wine country in Spain. And guys, we we know all of these countries are ginormous. So trying to just get little tidbits here for everyone. But you have an amazing wine country in Spain as well. A wine uh, yeah. region, I should say. Yes. Do, do you know that that France and Spain and Italy too have an, 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 an amazing infrastructure? Uh, an have an, 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 an amazing and, and, a, and a big infrastructure. Uh, infrastructures, I, I said, well, infrastructures, no. <laughs> infrastructures, it's high speed train, high speed train. Infrastructure. Uh, Oh, infrastructure. Infrastructure. Yes. Thank you. Yes, high speed, high speed train. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a big airports. Paris, Barcelona, Madrid, Alicante, Málaga, Milano, Roma, Nice. It's a big airports. Wow. And, uh, and yes, but the future, the future in, in, uh, between France, Italy, and Spain is the train, not the flight. Is the trend? So, yeah. Tell and, us and, about... and you and you, yeah, Josh, and you, you ask me about Malaga. Malaga mm. is a good city for to live because have an, a good airport, international airport, mm. and uh, have a high speed train. And and Malaga is at two hours of Madrid, more or less, by train. Uh, Barcelona is five hours by by train, and have an, uh, an, uh, beautiful coast, beautiful beach. Near Malaga are Marbella, Fuengirola, Torremolinos, Torre Estepona. Yeah. <laughs> Estepona. <laughs> uh, uh, have an, uh, a good weather, good weather, and a good gastronomy. And Malaga now have an, uh, an, uh, an, uh, an uh, Special museums, for example, Malaga have an a Picasso museum because Picasso, the painter, uh, born in Malaga. I did not know there was a, a Picasso museum in Malaga. That's amazing, and I'm a huge uh, Picasso fan. That's great. They um, tell tell us that you you mentioned that the properties with outdoor space have been really taking off and doing extremely well. In, um, in in Barcelona, what what are we seeing in regards to values there? Ah, the, the values. Uh, Barcelona and Madrid at this moment are uh, the cities more expensive in, in Spain. Uh, more expensive. For example, if you want to buy in a, in the center in the center of the city, uh, Paseo de Gracia, Rambla Catalunya, uh, the price of the house. Uh, more or less are 10,000 for a square meter. 10,000. If you want to live or if you uh, uh, want to, to buy a property in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the area of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the forum or the Diagonal Mar, because there are uh, big condominiums in front of the sea, 
is more expensive. It's possible to arrive 12, 12,000 euros for a square meter. Wow. But, but, but in this area are, is, are very beautiful because around, uh, around the buildings are a, a green, green parks and you have uh, 100 meters or 200 meters, uh, one big beach. Mm. And the, the beach of Barcelona, because the beach of Barcelona have five kilometers of the beach. Yeah. No, and, have, then, and then you can continue on to the, uh, the continue north and go up to uh, a lot of wonderful places uh, going toward uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the French border and, and so many other wonderful places there as well. So, uh, Ramon, share with us uh, if you, I don't know if you have a second home, but if you were to buy a second home, where would it be? Uh, uh, for, uh, for Spanish people or for foreign people? <laughs> ah, <laughs> I don't know. I think both. Let's go uh, with yeah, both. Okay. 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 Where, for where, do you, where do you yeah. send us? Where do you send us Americans? That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for, for example, I, 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 I am. Uh, I live in San Cugat del Valle. San Cugat del Valle is a residential town near Barcelona, at uh, twelve kilometers, yeah? and I have an, a good, uh, a good uh, communication by train or by or by or by, or by highway, uh, no problem. But for example, my second house is in the mountain because. Ah. It, because uh, I have 130 kilometers for the Pyrenees. In the Pyrenees, ah. in the Pyrenees, we have an, uh, uh, a lot, a lot uh, ski station. Because here the people like to uh, to ski, to ski, to ski on in, in the snow. And ah. for example, ah. Andorra, ah. And, uh, yeah. for example, and Andorra. Where uh, where uh, live uh, our uh, our uh, uh, next uh, Fiasi uh, World President Jordi Ribó. Ah, it's uh, yeah. it's it's near, <laughs> it's near it's near my house. It's one hundred forty kilometers. Wow, wow. And and, all, and yes, and the people prefer go to the mountain or or to the coast. Or and to here, the coast. yes, in Barcelona uh, we have Costa Brava. Costa yeah. Brava is very beautiful. But yeah. only have a problem, the weather, because the Costa Brava is only for two, three months, more or less. Mm. Uh, mm. That in Costa del Sol is six, seven months every, every, every year that you have and a good weather, good climate. Yeah. So, uh, one, so tell us, uh, uh, before we leave Spain and, and rush off to that other place on the other side of the water there, uh, <laughs> tell us what kind of a down payment does do I need and to purchase a property in Spain? And how is uh, the financing for a, an, an American? Yeah, uh, for the investor for the investors uh, of American people, I think so that at this moment the challenger are in residential and uh, in office, mm -hmm. in logistic, because at this moment the, the logistic here in Spain are yeah. are, are very strong. Uh, because there are uh, uh, big companies, uh, for example, Amazon, 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 buy, Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Amazon buy and a big land near, near uh, uh, the frontier of France because uh, the, the government of France don't, don't, don't want that uh, Amazon have an, uh, an, uh, an, uh, an, uh, a big land for, for, the, for the, the logistic distribution. And, mm. and and implant this uh, this uh, this uh, this big uh, uh, big logistic in in La Junquera near France, uh, and, and this is the future here because there are a lot a lot of uh, uh, companies of the transport of the of the technology of the logistic that look at a big lands for uh, for to uh, uh, construction and a, and a big logistic uh, logistic buildings. And also uh, here in Spain, uh, uh, a lot, a lot of American funds look uh, for to buy an a build, build to rent, build to rent, build to rent, build to rent. Yes, because the, the funds look uh, this uh, this type of uh, of property for uh, for two investment. 
And then real quick, Ramon, what about taxes? What are your property taxes on property? Ah, taxes, okay. Ah. <laughs> taxes. <laughs> Always taxes. <laughs> uh, in Spain, depends. If, if it's a new construction, I know I explain. <laughs> it, de it, dep it depends. It depends. If you're, depends America, yes. if you're an American, you pay your taxes a much no, higher. No, 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 no. All people, all people, that's the matter. Foreign people or national people pay the same, okay? Not different, okay? But depends that if you uh, buy in Madrid or if you, if you buy in Bilbao, that if you buy in Barcelona, if you buy in Malaga. The taxes are uh, from 6% to 10%. In the second hand, second hand, if it's new construction, it's 10% in residential, okay? Mm. If, you, if you buy office, uh, uh, retail, uh, logistic, the, uh, the taxes is 21%. 21%. Wow. For, for in the transaction, in the transaction, in the transaction. Uh -huh. Yeah. But you have another tax, is, is a municipality tax. This, this municipality tax pay every, every year, more or less uh, uh, 1% of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the value of the property. Not, not, not so much. The, 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 the quantity more, more uh, higher is, is when, when you buy, when you buy. Yeah. Ramon, I, I'm so sorry we have to um, leave your country and, and head over to Italy, but we, we only have so much time for these events. And I tell you, this has been amazing and fascinating. And I, I am thrilled. And I, I can't decide if I want to buy a second, buy a, a second place. I want to buy a place uh, in uh, Sevilla or, or Bilbao. I love them both. So thank you, Ramon. And now, guys, we're off to Italy. And um, we have with us Marissa Kagan, who is based in, La in Las Vegas, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, she's also a member of FIOPSI, as have been our uh, other two panelists so far. And Marissa has a fascinating approach for everyone on buying properties in Italy. So Marissa, without further ado, There we go. Hi, everybody. Ciao, come stai? I was having my antipasto platter in honor of your, your food event. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> and I have my little Montepulciano too. <laughs> that's, that's a nice. So my name, my married name is Marisa Kagan, but my father was born in Piemonte. He was born in Northern Italy. My, my legal name in Italy is Marisa Maliagasco. And um, I speak Italian, I speak Spanish because my mother's from Argentina. I studied French. Alors je fais un mélange de tous les langues. So I, I, when I speak, I kind of speak a little bit of French and I just kind of pop it all together. But um, I- Marissa, became... your, Marissa, yours sounds about like mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, you're, 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 fluent in, you're fluent in both of those. So. Oh, thank you. No, I, um, I love, I was very fortunate to be able to travel a lot as a kid, spent most summers in Europe somewhere. And um, a lot of my family's in Nisa, in, Ital in France, in Northern Italy, in uh, Levanto, which is near um, Cinque Terre, which is um, beautiful coastal villages. You do this whole walking path connected to these beautiful ancient little towns um, <laughs> carved into a mountain aside. It's just gorgeous. Um, but I have, I've been an agent now for only nine years. Um, my first career was acting as a child and I was an agent for film and television in LA. And then I moved to Vegas literally to take care of my parents who retired here. And so I recareered re into real estate, but I became very involved in global right away got my CIPS, then became involved in FIOPSI. And uh, my passion really is incoming and outgoing business. Uh, it is a referral business. Uh, so, which is kind of funny because I'm here to talk a little bit about the one euro projects in Italy, which yeah. literally- See everyone, they, she knew that I was cheap. So she did a whole <laughs> presentation. Well, it's really funny like because um, the president of the Italian equivalent of National Association of Realtors, Federico something de Bianchi, uh, he was on a panel yesterday 
And he literally was there talking about the one euro homes and then going, but I really highly don't advise it. I mean, it's a very much a problem. <laughs> you know, it was, it was very funny because there is a lot of liability in the one euro homes. Okay, so it's not for your average Joe. You need for, trusted for advisors. I, yeah, for everyone, I will tell you, I personally have been uh, looking into the program a lot since it was first announced. And my biggest thing was identifying where some of the little towns were and then also getting to those towns where uh -huh. the, dollar, the euro dollars are and how long, you know, could I go for the weekend, right? And, uh, it, you That's know, with, funny. Where was I? No, and I did. I looked into where do I fly into? Do I fly into exactly. Milano in Malpensa? Do I fly into Rome? You know, so it really is something that I think people should really seriously consider. Uh, well, and there are some people buying them sight unseen right now, which is crazy. But um, I'm going to share my screen if you don't mind. I'm going to show you a map. You just said that, so we'll take it out of order. Um, where can I share? Share this. Can you see this map? I'm not, uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so this this is all the different little regions that have it, and it's called a comune. So the comune is, you know, basically your little, your village. Each comune has, think of it this way, when somebody doesn't pay their property taxes here in the United States, you can go and get that property, right? You, you pay off the property taxes and, and you can, it's kind of the same thing, only this one, you get the full title on the property. The reason this happens is because in Italy, your first home has a much lower property tax rate if you're, if you're Italian than your second home. Your second home property tax, I think is about 10%. So if you have inherited an ancestral home in this beautiful little village, for example, here on the border of Switzerland, um, you know, Borgo Mezzavelle, or if you're going to be um, outside of La Spezia, but you're in a mountain area there, you know, or they're hard to get to. Some of these villages, the infrastructure's crumbled. So literally it's winding roads through a mountain, you know, area. And the children all, f all left for work. They went to Milano, they went to Roma, they went to Bologna, you know, they're they're no longer interested in the small town of a thousand people, or in some cases, there's only like 90 or 100 people. So as a result, those family members just say, we don't want to pay these taxes anymore. And they give it back to the comune. In some cases, the comune becomes like um, a bridge between the owners and the new buyer. But uh, and it depends on comune to comune. It really depends. So it Marissa, changes you, every day. Yeah. Marissa, yeah. you were going to share with us a, a slide deck. Is yeah, this is gonna, let's cover buying in Italy. Yeah. Let's go to the beginning. Okay. So now I'm going to share that. Here it is. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, from the beginning. So first of all, I have to give credit. No, I don't want titles. Ah, where are you? And slide. How do you do the? <laughs> yeah, you're back. From the beginning. But I want it to be full screen. Why is it doing this? I think you were full screen initially. OK, there I am. Hold on. Do, 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 do. There it is. Now you see it? Thank you, yes. Okay, so first I have to give credit to Marco Costa who is uh, one of my panelists on a seminar we did called Invest in Italy in early 2021. And uh, Marco Costa is uh, born in Italy, uh, an avogato, but he moved to the United States and he now practices in Arizona. So his contact information is there. For any of your members who would like a copy of this presentation, by all means, you're welcome to have it. Um, I've given it to your your uh, your peeps here. Um, so and with Marco thank Costa's you. approval, of course. And I think he's even in the audience. So thank you, Marco. Um, Marco, thank you. So and my my contact information is there as well, just in case you need some uh, some um, information or have any other questions. By all means, just reach out to me. 
But um, so the requirements- And Marissa, 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 just to interrupt you real quick. So you're about to go over these requirements. This is for all types of property, this not just the dollars. all Dallas. property, not okay, the income. The one you know is a slightly yeah. different. There's a slide in yeah. it later. So for purchase, I, I just property, wanted I just wanted everyone to know that it was this is now we're back yes. to regular real estate. So for purchasing for any foreign investor to purchase real estate in Italy, you have to have if you're from if you have an EU passport, then you have to have the permesso di soggiorno, um, a permit of stay in the codice codice fiscale, the fiscal code. For those of us in the United States who have one passport, um, you need to have the codice fiscale. And for entities, you need to be registered as an actual foreign company in Italy. So um, that requires obtaining a Codice Fiscale Partita IVA. So, which, by the way, Marco can help you do. So you can always reach out to Marco for that. Um, step one, you got to write an offer. Once you've identified a property, you got to write an offer. The offer to purchase um, must include at least the essential terms. You have to have meeting of the minds, identification of the real estate based on the cadastral certificate and the agreed upon price. It can include accessory terms such as the term for the closing, the deposit, the capara confirmatoria and the capara penitenziale, the warranties. Those have to do with under what conditions you forfeit funds. So it's it must be in writing. And if accepted, the offer is not revocable. So there is nothing like the contingencies that we have in some of our states here where it's contingent upon the uh, home inspections, contingent upon the, you know, no, there, there are no contingencies. You gotta know you're doing this deal. Um, so the preliminary agreement is mandatory. That, that first step is kind of more of the, the preliminary step towards getting to the actual offer terms. Now, of course, you can do an inspection. You can hire somebody to go there and do all of that prior to, but you're pretty much buying properties as is um, in Italy. So um, the preliminary agreement, this has to contain the essential terms plus all the accessory terms. It is a promise to convey the title of the real estate and to stipulate the closing. It must be in writing, otherwise it's void. It can be signed by the parties alone or with the assistance of a notario, they call it, notary. Must be registered with the Italian Reve uh, Revenue Agency within 20 days from the signature if it occurred between the parties alone and within 30 days if it occurred with the assistance of a notary. And can be reg registered with the local cadastral office to afford protection against third party innocent purchasers. Okay, there are situations where there is no title company involved. It, that, that doesn't happen. It's the notario that's really functioning kind of in that role. Um, the step three would be the closing, the rogito, which must include the terms of the preliminary agreement. It conveys the title of the real estate to the buyer. It must, in writing, and requires the assistance of a notario. Um, you can actually get, you have to be there in person to do it unless you've given power of attorney to someone there to do it for you. And I don't know if it's the same in Spain or in France, but... Um, uh, so it, it is one of those things where you do need to have boots on the ground, somebody, a trusted advisor. The other thing is when you're actually going to wire the money in, well, this is the power of attorney part. Um, I kind of covered that. I want to try to get through this because it's kind of long. Um, when and, it and, gets... and, and Marissa, time is of the essence, unfortunately. Right, right. Um, but so so, we, so we're, we're, gonna... loving all, we're loving all of this. Uh, this like I said, you can always get this afterwards. Yeah. But um, in wiring funds, for example, they're pretty strict with the laws there. So it has to go to one of the principal one of the principal parties. So if you have uh, given power of attorney to somebody, fine. The notario, fine. Then the then the money can be wired to those individuals to close the transaction. Um, but it, you do need to make sure it's trusted people that you're working with. So now the main differences between the United States and Italy is that it is as is. You're not going to be able to do a buyer's request for repairs. Um, real estate agents paid by both parties. So there's no such thing as a seller paying everybody's commissions. And um, there are certain certificates similar to like lead-based paint and stuff like that, that they do have for their buildings before 1967. It's called Certificato di Agibilità. Um, again, I'm gonna blow through this. So do you need an attorney? 
it doesn't require it. It's not required, but it's highly advisable. I would never I imagine doing a deal over there without an attorney involved. Um, there are real estate agents that can do the whole thing. Um, but again, just make sure that you've gotten a trusted uh, referral to an agent that either through FIOPSI or through CIPS, someone that you have vetted uh, before you refer it to your clients. And the notary fees, the notario, they're not cheap. It's, it's pretty much equivalent to escrow fees and, uh, and the title policies and everything. If you combine them all together, it's pretty much what the notario would cost. So now I'm going to go forward. Uh, you do not need to be a resident to do investments in Italy. Um, there are certain rules as to how long you can stay. Um, I believe it's less than 180 days in a year, but split up. Um, I thought, yeah, I thought it was a maximum of 90 days. Yeah, but twice a year. But, so but twice a year. 90 and 90. So the first part right. of the year and then, yeah. Um, or or could you could you actually do your 90 days, fly back to San Francisco for a week and then go back to do the second? You know, I've heard 90 days. I've heard that people do do that. OK. Um, but again, I'm not an attorney. I'm not an immigration attorney, so I don't <laughs> want to get in hot water here. You should definitely check with an, with an attorney on that. Um, so the, the one euro project caught my eye because my dad's village is a little village called Bagnasco. And Bagnasco was on Via Nazionale. Now, prior to the mm -hmm. highways being built, Via Nazionale was the way you would go down to the beach, <laughs> to, uh, to a beautiful beach down there. Oh, what was the name of it? Jeez, I can't believe I just forgot. Alasio. So um, that was, everybody knew Bagnasco because that's the way you would travel down to the coastline. But when they built all the freeways, um, you know, these little villages and that windy roads switching back and forth, you know, they were no longer in vogue. A lot of the young generation left and um, a lot of these buildings were not maintained. So for example, my father's home, uh, which he gave to his sister who stayed in Italy, kills me. All my cousins were like, why? But okay, so my cousin owns the property fine and then she decided to sell it and she didn't ask me if I wanted to buy it, which really pissed me off. But anyway, <laughs> that, that house was livable, but because it was their second home, it became a burden to them to keep it up. So they, they just sold it for 60,000 euro. Five oh, wow. bedroom, wow. balcony, looking at, I mean, oh my gosh. right. And it had his, yeah. my dad made wine in that, um, in, in that house in the, in the ba they had like a, a basement area that, where they would have the vat of wine and they would stomp grapes with their feet and all this stuff. Mm. So ah, memories, but so what happened is a lot of these buildings became blighted. They even had a few of, of their early on some one Euro or, or even just, you could pick up a property for five, $10,000 from the owner. Um, and um, maybe they had some crumbling walls, but it's, it's a really old village. Um, in fact, that village, they, Napoleon went through there, Alexander went through there. So um, there's a lot of incredible history. So the one Euro projects, you're not going to find the really populated city centers or things like that. These, these are all remote. They're, um, some of them are easier to get to than others, but um, they're definitely, they're definitely not, it's for people who want the quiet, the peace, to walk down to the grocery store, to know everybody's name in the in the town. That that's the kind of vibe. Yeah. Now investors yeah. have come in and bought several one euro homes in some areas and revitalized a village. So I know that there was one. I can't remember which town, but they literally made it more of like a yoga retreat, like a like a, they brought in mm. some. Yeah. So I think yeah. it, there's definitely opportunities. Uh, some people make it um, either. Uh, Agricultura, like they, they do agricultural, like where you go pick the food that's been grown in the area and then you learn how to cook it, paired up with the wines that are made in the region, you know. Yeah. So there are business opportunities to make destination, a, attractive destinations for people to either come retire mm -hmm. or rent, you know. Uh, so Marissa, um, just uh, because again, we're running short on time here no and we want to be respectful of all of you guys as well. One thing that I can say to everyone uh, from what I've learned, and Marissa, if you can chime in and, or anyone else, is that the 
um, finding your contractors mm -hmm. to, to, to repair these crumbling buildings. What the beauty of it is that uh, a lot of the artisan now have work again. And so that's really great. And there, these small towns, uh, they're with this uh, revitalization, they're you, you know, bringing in architects and de de designers and, and all of the craftsmen. So it's been really great from that perspective and, and helping that out. Okay, real estate there people want to know. There's a question I want to answer, which is real yeah, estate sure. agents, it's a different system than here where we have data sharing and MLS systems. Mm -hmm. In Europe largely, and I, I won't speak to France or Spain, but it's, it's the listing agent has their portfolio. They either have a website or they have an office that you walk into. So you look through the properties they have and sometimes do people do get buyer's agents. It's becoming a little bit more popular now. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you're responsible to pay your buyer's agent. So um, everybody, Ram Ramon has um, on his team, um, uh, 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 who lives in, even though he lives in Spain, he's from Italy, who oh. also knows the Italian market as well. And Ramon and, and Elena, I can't even think of his name. Uh, I, we're friends on Facebook and all that other stuff. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he's uh, uh, a great young guy who, uh, who, who, who would be great there. Um, the down payment in Italy, someone wants to know, Sandra, you want to know if it's 50% down on the dollar house? Come on. You and I are going <laughs> on that together. Well, now, so um, I, I, I also have, um, I have a one page helpful links page, which I'll, I think I also shared with you guys, which please send out great, to them. Yeah. There's a ton of links, their, their sites. One's um, an accountant, Bola Accounting, who can answer a lot of questions regarding um, accounting issues. Um, another one is auctions. Besides the one euro projects, there's also auctions of live, homes that are livable that you could get for fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. I mean, it now is a really, really good time to buy in Italy. There's a lot of depression right now in, in the, the pricing. Yeah. Um, but as far as the, the, it's my understanding that you can get a loan, but I believe it's 50% down. 50% down. The other thing so to keep in mind is that there's tax benefits. If you update a home and you make it green or you put solar on it or you um, make it earthquake, uh, a new roof on it. So for earthquakes and stuff, if it's considered an improvement on the property, you can get up to 110% of what you spent back. 110%. That's fantastic. Yes. So, so there's a lot of incentive to do it. Again, I don't know that this is the sort of thing that as an agent, you want to refer someone to go do a one year home. But if you have investors and you build a team of, of trusted sources for engineering architecture, you know, um, my good friend it, it got a place in Abruzzo, you know, and generally speaking, the renovations are between 750 to 1000 per square meter. Uh, for the renovation costs. And again, renovation is going to depend on what kind of bells and whistles you put in there. If everything mm -hmm. is really high end marble travertine, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different than, uh, than if you do like just easy livable stuff that, wow. that's like, you know, yeah. so. This yes. is uh, great information. Um, I know that we're running over time, but we're loving it. We love all Not these people. Stay Not around. Quite, not quite, not quite over, but we're really. No, no, we're not. Tight. But again, every and, uh, one other question I think uh, I think and was in the chat was uh, I think we covered the commissions. What, what are the commissions in Italy, France, and um, and and uh, Spain? Uh, so Marissa, you've kind of helped us out there. Uh, Leo, can you just jump in and tell us about commissions and how do we make how can we make money uh, by referring? agents, I mean, clients to you. Uh, in Spain, for example? Uh, yeah, in Spain. We'll go with you. <laughs> then we'll go to Leo. Yes, in Spain, it uh, depends, uh, depends of the, the kind of property, but normally it's minimum 3% and maximum 5-6% maximum, uh, from 3 till 5-6% of the fees uh, of the of the the commission in Spain, mm. but here here uh, at this moment uh, there are two kinds of realtors. 
the uh, the realtors of of uh, of work uh, uh, working uh, with the, the, ben the vendor and realtors uh, work uh, uh, to the to the uh, to the buyer the personal shopper okay the personal mm -hmm. shopper and the personal shopper have a different fees okay it's more it's more cheap yeah and then in Leo in France yes the fees in France are free are free. Uh, uh, you know, you, you can, uh, you, the rules, it, the law obliged to you to, uh, to, to, to publish the, 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 the fees, you know, and uh, it depends of the, 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 the amount of the, the transaction uh, under most of them under 200, 250,000 euro there is around uh, six, seven percent, and more uh, uh, from uh, five hundred thousand. It's you can uh, go to five percent, and uh, around two, three millions you can four percent, and more you the the, the price is, the amount is high, and more the fees are are uh, low, uh -huh. and uh, I'm I'm admirative of the your the American system, American system for me is the best why because in america you have three percent buyer three percent the 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 seller okay in in france no you can get your fees from the buyer or from the owner you know it's it's uh, and you the 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 uh, and for this it's it's clear it's transparency you, you get no problem in america in france you can get problem because you, you take from the buyer, you can take uh, uh, fees from here and here. And it's not, it's not a, a really good mind for transaction. Anyway, transaction get, and the, the, you, you have to, uh, the, the law obliged to you to have a, a mandate for, for, for selling. If, if not, the notary can give you the money, can give you the fees if you have not uh, uh, a mandate to 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 sell the the property. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, we have to uh, uh, go and the 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 law the French rule protect really the buyer because when you sign at the notary and the notary is not the same function in in the United States than in Spain for instance than in France the notary get all all the system of the sale you know. Uh, in uh, in America or in Spain, it's the lawyer. Okay, in France, it's the notary get all make two, but the French law is really protecting the consumer. Why? Because when you sign and the notary uh, the f first, you you get uh, fourteen days for changing the mind. If you don't want to buy, you can cancel all for for nothing. You have no no, uh, uh, no, uh, um, no one euro to 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 pay if you change the mind and you you cancel the the the, the, the. it's especially for in France this you know uh, it's good it's not good whatever but you the, the consumer is really really protected that never in the world the consumer is so protected in that than in France okay. So and uh, the, all the the, the 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 money is protected by the notary, uh, the lawyer in in Spain or in in, in state they can make bankruptcy or something like that. In mm -hmm. France, you get a guarantee, uh, uh, a uh, cashier, a national cashier guarantee your money, deposit money in the notary. It's 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 really. Uh, uh, a good protection for the consumer, you know, and it's really special that I always say it in, in for instance, when we, we talk and when develop uh, real estate in Spain uh, with the, the, the ministry, we, we, we give them the, this kind of, of rules, you know, to, to, for the consumers in, in, in Portugal too, we make this. In, uh, in, uh, in Morocco too, you know, in many countries, we, we try to give them the French rules because they are really strong 
for the consumer, you know, and we have many protections, you know, uh, around the, 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 the rules and the consumer the get, can be afraid of nothing, okay? Uh, and all, all is uh, in, in uh, America, for, uh, for example, you can, a uh, 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 realtor can, uh, can sell without uh, a mandate, okay? But in France, for selling something, you have to, uh, be, you have to get a mandate for, from the, the, the buyer to sell the property. You Thank need, you. If not, the notary can't give you the fees, okay? So yeah. it's really a, a good, good protections. Uh, and uh, uh, we get a golden visa too for foreigners today. Uh, allow, it's the, the minimum for getting a golden visa is 500,000 euro. And wow. from, yeah. from, yes, from, from this, we get many, many, many Asian people come in, in France to, to buy uh, and they get a, a, a golden visa because they, they, they come with child and with the, the, with the families. So, stay it, so you say that the golden visa is 500,000 euro? Yes, 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 yes. In Spain yeah. too. In Spain as well. So it, in you know, that, too, it's yes. interesting. It sounds like our EB-5 immigration program here in the United States, uh, just a different format. Hey guys, it's 4.30 in the morning in Spain and in France. These yeah. guys have been champions. Um, I think I'm turning it over to you, Susan, right? Uh, but it is, John, just tr you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. And, 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 and Marissa, you Marissa you're just one hour away. So, oh, I, mean, I know. I didn't suffer at all. Muchísimas <laughs> gracias, Ramon. Merci beaucoup, Leo. I hope yes, there was yes, a question yes. in the chat box that I think they might want to answer, though, regarding English speaking real estate agents, whether you have a need for uh, for any of us to come out there and help sell. <laughs> Reed, that, that's Reed Rankin. He knows he knows what to do. He, he's looking for a job. <laughs> we'll get you. We'll get you a job, Reed. Susan, before, before we say good night. I would like to um, introduce both Marcus Grogan's and Rebecca White from the Events and Education Committee. Um, please give a shout out for all the work that has gone on behind the scenes here. Um, thank and you also so much. Don't, don't, don't forget Genevieve. I thank won't, you very I much for this opportunity. I, I'm sorry. All right. You're still all right. in my thunder. <laughs> So, and I want to, I want to thank the um, wonderful Genevieve and also Emily, all the staff at SFAR for all of your support. Thank you so much. For those who delivered goodie boxes today, Fanny, oh Teresa, Christian, Tina, Genevieve, I want you to know we didn't use DoorDash. We had volunteers from our community and I um, also want to thank Curiosity Catering and Loretta Keller for her generous part in the in the whole um, meeting. And uh, Marcus and Rebecca, if you would just like to take us out, we will um, end on time. You got three minutes. <laughs> Wait, but before we do, can do we? Who do we give the award to for the best slicing of the baguette? I, to, for me, it's <laughs> between it's between Marcus and. Uh, and 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 Damon. So though you know the, with the chainsaw, and then Marcus with the uh, the wine. Yes, <laughs> I know. I don't know. I think we're gonna have to have a battle of the baguettes at our Thank next you. event, which will Part be two. in June. Yeah, Rebecca, Marcus. I just want to say merci beaucoup, molto grazie, and uh, muchísimas gracias. It was really fun, mucho divertido. Uh, I've been to these countries. It's, I think, a dream of a lot of Americans to have a, uh, a place to retire and to dream because a lot of us are Francophiles or we all love Italy. And I used to live in Spain. So these are wonderful places and it just makes me really want to travel. I mean, we're so bound here with COVID. I just can't wait to get out of this country and go back to Europe. So ciao and merci. Au revoir. Oh, thank you. Hey everyone, just want to say thank you. Um, I'm driving, so I don't have my video on. 
Uh, but really enjoyed the presentations and thank you so much to GBC Education, Joski, Genevieve and SFAR. Um, can't wait to do something like this again. And don't leave out Fiopsi. Yeah, thanks, 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 Susan. Thanks, Sunny. Uh, we have uh, my and thanks, uh, My uh, co-chair Alina and uh, and members of of Fiopsi who are on from from our uh, incoming president in New York. I know she's on. Susan is a member of Fiopsi, uh, and, and there are many, many, many wonderful people that I names that I, I see in the list and. Also, Aria, and, and, and it just goes on and on. Big family, big family, Joe. Big, big family. family, it really <laughs> is. So um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, again. And uh, let's look forward to some more exciting programming. So next event, Susan, don't forget. Yeah. Sunny, when is that next event? June 3rd. It will be North, Central, and South America. We will be visiting somewhere closer in the same time zone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, and as Leo, we say good night. Thank yeah, you. Leo, Ramon, you guys have been, were amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wake up in the thank middle you. of the Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful yeah. webinar. Ciao, arrivederci. Arrivederci, ciao. Ciao. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye. adios. Thought. Adios. The final thought for tonight is Buenos Dulces. Adios, thank you. Adios, thank con, you. adios con, con, con jamón y vino. <laughs> jamón y Spanish wine. <laughs> Good night. Monte Pachado. <laughs> Marissa, I want some.